The mosinituzumab is a CD20, um, CD3 bispecific um, T cell engaging antibody. Uh, we've seen a shift in treatment, uh, in the development of new treatments for patients with uh, lymphomas um, away from um, cytotoxic chemotherapy towards, um, uh, towards treatments which modulate the immune system. And uh, in contrast to conventional anti-CD20 monoclonal antibodies such as rituximab and abinutuzumab, which rely on um, efficacy mediated through um, macrophages, natural killer cells through antibody-dependent cell-mediated cytotoxicity, the next generation of immunotherapy drugs for uh, lymphoma uh, appear, uh, are uh, exploiting the uh, anti-tumor effects of cytotoxic T cells. And the way in which they do that is by having uh, two arms, one engaging CD20 on the surface of um, B cells, including B cell lymphoma, and CD3, which engages uh, uh, the um, antigen on T cells, um, bringing the host T cells into contact with um, tumor cells and um, causing um, immune um, mediated uh, T cell mediated cell death. So, mesinituzumab is uh, one such uh, example of a biospecific antibody. And in, in um, one of these abstracts, we looked at the, uh, the phase one experience using uh, mesinituzumab in patients with follicular lymphoma. Now, this was a, a reasonably high risk uh, group of patients with follicular lymphoma. Um, the study was included, included patients who'd received two prior systemic therapies, including patients uh, who had uh, previous progression of disease within two years of initiation of frontline treatment and double refractory patients. Um, the, the dosing of mosenituzumab, at least as an IV formulation, uses a step-up or double-step fractionation approach, which is designed to um, mitigate the risk of cytokine release syndrome. Um, in this schema, during the first cycle, small doses are given during the, the first two weeks, with the larger dose being given in the third week, uh, followed by ongoing um, doses uh, on a three-weekly schedule thereafter. Uh, patients who were included were required to have um, good performance status and organ function. And the objectives of this uh, phase one study uh, with, uh, was to um, explore the safety and tolerability of the treatment as well as, as, well as the efficacy. The median age of the 62 patients with relapsed follicular lymphoma included was 59, and the majority um, had a double refractory status to both an alkylator and an anti-CD20 monoclonal antibody, 61%. 47% of patients experienced a POD24 event. There was a median of three prior lines of therapy. All patients had previously been treated with an alkylating agent and an anti-CD20 monoclonal antibody. And 74% of patients were refractory to their last line of therapy. So this is a high risk group of patients with follicular lymphoma. Uh, the response rates were um, the were encouraging. And among all 62 efficacy available follicular lymphoma patients, the objective response rate was 67.7%, uh, among whom 51.6% were complete responses. And this was consistent across the high-risk subgroups that I mentioned, those who were refractory to their last line of therapy, uh, patients refractory to both an alkylator and an anti-CD20, and patients who had experienced a POD24 event. So the markers that uh, indicate uh, poorer outcomes in patients who would be treated with chemotherapeutic strategies um, seem to do well um, regardless in, uh, on, upon treatment with uh, mosenituzumab. The, um, uh, the uh, complete response rates seem to be consistent um, across uh, the dose level seen, and the median uh, follow-up after first response is 18.4 months with a median duration of response of 20.4 months, which is certainly encouraging for this uh, population. In terms of adverse events, uh, these were fairly typical of what is seen with other biospecific antibodies. Um, uh, there were uh, treatment-related adverse events seen in, in about 72% of patients with um, uh, grade three or, or higher adverse events seen in 67% of patients, of, of which 35% were considered to be treatment-related. Um, 
only one, only 8.1% uh, of adverse events led to treatment discontinuation. Most of the adverse events were mild. The most common were a hypophosphatemia, which is common with this class of agent. Um, and cytokine release syndrome was also um, mostly uh, low grade in severity. Um, uh, among the grade three to four adverse events, uh, we saw neutropenia in 22 uh, 0.6% of patients. Uh, we saw anemia in 6.5% of patients and serious infections in 19.5% of patients, with the most frequent being uh, pneumonia in 5% of patients. Um, specifically regarding cytokine release uh, syndrome, we saw uh, any grade CRS in 17.7% of patients. Um, of these, virtually all were grade one, no grade, uh, no grade three events were seen, um, and one grade two event was seen. Um, the median onset of the first CRS event was one day and the median duration was two days. These all resolve without the use of tocilizumab ICU admission or vasopressors and commonly manifested as fever chills and headache. Um, these were largely limited to cycle one as previously mentioned. Um, so in summary, um, this, uh, by, this, uh, uh, Anti-CD20, CD3, bispecific antibody mosinotuzumab uh, has consistently high response rates in a high-risk group of patients with follicular lymphoma. Uh, we're continuing to assess higher dose levels in, in, in an attempt to maximise the efficacy. As a single agent, this, this, uh, this antibody has a, uh, an acceptable safety profile consistent with other bispecific antibodies with low rates of grade 3 or higher adverse events. The cytokine release syndrome is mild and manageable and occurs early. Um, mosenotuzumab is um, an encouraging agent in patients with follicular lymphoma and uh, a phase three clinical trial exploring this in combination with lenalidomide is planned.